Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game from the 2023 World Tournament for War of the Ring. And my opponent is Scarge. This is the round of 64. It is a best of three match. We have already played one game where I was free people, and now I am playing a shadow. If you haven't had a chance to watch the first game of this match, I will pause for a moment before I spoil the result. I won that game, so if I manage to win this, I will advance to the top 32. And let's jump right in. So I allocated one eye as shadow, and I rolled one more and only got one muster. Obviously, on turn one as shadow, you want to roll at least two musters so you can get Saruman and get your extra die. But Sometimes that doesn't happen, uh, and maybe that's an argument for allocating zero eyes, but there are flip sides to that coin because sometimes you'll allocate zero eyes and roll zero eyes, and then Fellowship will get a bunch of free movement. I think that the difference is pretty small one way or another, but I find the games are more interesting when Shadow allocates an eye. On round one it just leads to more fun and interesting games so that's why i do it even if it's not necessarily perhaps the most optimal but it's hard to know exactly what's most optimal in terms of cards happy to see hill trolls i'm probably not going to play it turn one but it's a good card to have isildur's bane obviously very useful if they are revealed at some point out of rivendell and that's also an argument for allocating at least one eye because you want to reveal the Fellowship at some point as Shadow on their way to Mordor, and the sooner you do it, the more vulnerable they become to these sorts of corruption cards. All right, Free People drew two pretty useless cards at the beginning of the game, but they didn't draw any, they didn't roll any Palantirs, so there's probably no urgency for them to play either of those cards right now. All right, let's see what they do. I start by mustering Isengard. Okay, they passed. I mustered Isengard. Now they move, because of course, why not? I miss them. And then I move my armies from Baradur to Gorgoroth. They move again. And I hit them this time. Pleasant for me. And draw three. So obviously Gandalf is going to go. And, you know, I, in some ways as, as Shadow, I'm happy to hit the Fellowship. But also that's a very efficient use of corruption. And, oh, this is one benefit of only getting sort of a silver lining, really, of only getting one muster as Shadow when on turn one, because now Gandalf will not be able to show up turn two because I will wait to muster Saruman until my last die of the round, and therefore free people will not be able to muster Gandalf because his entrance, Gandalf the White, because his entrance conditions will not be met because I won't have any minions. So... The earliest Gandalf can show up is turn three, but still it's worth killing him to a three tile. All right, I get my army moving to Morinon from Gorgoroth. I'm guessing I'm going to head up towards the Dew Line because that's sort of a fair default strategy for Shadow. They move a third time. Why not? You have the dice. And I hit them twice. 75% chance of hitting them on two dice when hitting on four. So, uh, definitely less than 50% chance to reveal them overall. You know, about 75% times around a half, you know, probably 40% to reveal. So definitely a little lucky for me to reveal them here. They go into Moria. They get the extra tile. So far, no eyes have been drawn. There's been a three and a zero. So it's possible they'll get an eye here. Okay, a one reveal. You know, obviously you don't want to be pulling a lot of tiles out of the hunt pool, but you do... Um, you are sort of happy to see this extra reveal when you're already revealed right now. Um, and speaking of allocating eyes and hitting the Fellowship, I have Isildur's Bane. So there's a chance, I'm, I'm surely going to play this whenever the Fellowship hides, I'm surely going to play Isildur's Bane with my next tile because they're in, with my next uh, action, because they're in Moria. And... Um, there's a chance that I'm going to draw one of these three tiles and reveal them again. Not a high chance, but there's a chance. Okay, so I move armies around, and then they use Strider's ability to hide. So 
the chances of me having a tile right now or a card right now that could hurt them, not that high. Um, really just the three tile drawing cards would be best and I happen to have one. Um, so I play it and okay, now I get an eye, sure. So there were two chances, one for the for the Moria Stronghold, one for this tile drawing card. You know, sometimes you hit the eyes as as shadow and that keeps the game balanced, so. All right, um, they get Fear Fire Foes and so now they can be thinking maybe Gandalf is gonna be coming back in the West. Gandalf the White shows up in Grey Havens or Rivendell and then plays Fear Fire Foes, gets the North to war and possibly Dale can muster up, but there is no Saruman, so he's not going to be able to, or Scarge is not going to be able to do that. I allocate two eyes here. Normally, I would only allocate one, but I allocate two eyes because I want to make sure I get two rerolls against the Fellowship. I get one guaranteed from the Stronghold and one from the units. So I allocate two eyes. I roll no more, and then I get my muster. So, you know, I'm playing a bit of a corruption game, and okay. But, oh, look at this. I did not get any character or palantir dice so even if i drew something i drew gran but even if i had drawn something the free people know that there's no risk there's no risk of me messing with them right now all right so they're they're happy to do that but they're happy to move along they, they realize they don't have to rush normally you would move right away but they don't have to rush i muster sauron to war they move the fellowship now i do hit them once and get an eye here so I had about a 50% chance to hit them, about a 50% chance to reveal them, a little bit of a exactly 50% chance to reveal them. So only 25% chance about to get revealed there. Again, a little bit of bad luck for the fellowship, but not so crazy. One reveal, they um, take the one corruption and then the extra tile out of Moria is an eye. So that at that point was was pretty lucky for them. Um, but, you know, overall expected damage from that movement, you know, one in a reveal, pro probably pretty close to expectation there. All right. So I got a little lucky to reveal them. They got a little lucky to not take any damage on the extra tile from Moria. So pretty balanced overall, I would say. All right. I'm moving my armies along. They try and get Gandalf the White and realize they can't. And then they're sort of hinting to me that they have... Fear Fire Foes or Book of Mazarbal because they put Gandalf into Greyhaven. So, and by the way, Greyhaven's is better than Rivendell because Greyhaven's does not reveal to the shadow player if you're going to play Book of Mazarbal and go to Erdluin or if you're going to play Fear Fire Foes and go to Bree of the Shire. So, um, because you can't actually reach Erdluin from Rivendell. Okay, anyway, so anyway, I'm just saying this is a, this is the right place to put Gandalf if you're going to play either of those cards, but can't do it yet. So let's see. They hide the Fellowship, and now I get my army and a Nazgul on top of them, which is why I moved the Dol Guldur army over first. And I'm continuing my path towards Dale. I realize I'm in a little bit of a hurry because I don't want the North of the Dwarves to go to war before I, before I get there and they muster in advance. All right, so they move again because, yeah, you know, they, they don't want to go too high on corruption, but they do need to keep the fellowship moving and they have movement now. So if it goes, if, if they're, if they go too high on corruption, they're going fast enough, they probably could heal a little if they need to. So, all right, so they move again. I miss them on that roll. So that's ironic. I hit them on their first move on four dice with hitting on sixes, but on their second move, four dice on fives, I miss. So that that is pretty unlikely. Um, should we calculate it real fast? What's four, what's two thirds to the fourth power is the chances of missing. We're gonna do it real. Four divided by six times four divided by six times four divided by six times four divided by six. 20%. Okay. So only a 20% chance to miss them, but not so crazy that I missed. All right, moving on. I merge my armies up. I am prepared my attack onto the elves. And now they don't move a third time. 
and instead they move armies and get in the way of this northern Ravanian army. That's interesting. I don't know. I might have just moved again. Is it that important to do this army movement here? What do you think? Would you do that army movement? Or would you would you move the fellowship again? Or would you do do something else entirely? Um, you know, with Challenge of the King, do you feel at all tempted to try and send Aragorn to Minas Tirith? Okay, well... I'm I'm guessing I'm just going to attack into Old Forest. No, of course, I'm getting Saruman. Right, right. All right, so I get Saruman. Now is the right time to do it. I waited until my last die. And let's see. They draw scouts, which is, I think, close to what you expect. You usually get it. I think the average is like first three cards, something like that, for a 50% chance of getting scouts. Um and now when I attack into Old Forest Road, since I don't have Swarm of Bats, they're going to be able to retreat. So, all right, they declare the Fellowship. Parth Celebrant makes sense to not be on top of those armies. I allocate one eye and then roll three more. And then they get one movement, a Will of the West, and an extra muster. So that's close to the perfect role for them. They definitely want the Will of the West for Gandalf. They want a Palantir or a Muster to be able to play Fear Fire Foes. And then they want a character movement to move the Fellowship and then Musters to actually start mustering. So because I managed to get my armies to the north in time, yeah, maybe it actually doesn't matter and they're not going to bother playing Fear Fire Foes because they're not actually going to be able to muster in Dale. If, if they ever get the north to war, I'm going to attack Dale. So, all right. So they move armies again. They're getting Erebor ready. I don't know. Is that is that the most important move right now? I might have been inclined to just... Yeah, I don't know. It's not bad. Certainly not bad. It's useful to get your armies in position. Um, one thing that's interesting is do you end up getting these armies from Westamnet into Fords of Eisen or do you put them into Helm's Deep? Because this does allow for sort of a attack into Helm's Deep that's going to, if I circumvent Fords of Eisen, that's going to require them to get an extra, have to spend an extra army movement or character die to defend Helm's Deep. So I'm always a little wary of doing that. Um, I attack Old Forest Road. I don't have a card. They play Scouts. Yep. So the North has advanced towards war. I only have one more attack die. So I have to be cautious about how I play it. Um, I do want to get the North to war because I want to get the Witch King on turn three. So I'm anticipating, I'm expecting that this Old Forest Road army is going to attack into Dale. That's probably what I'm going to do. And then Carrot can start mustering up because I just didn't get enough attacks. If I had one more attack, I would move a regular into Carrick first, putting the north one away from war, and so Dale still can't muster, and then I would attack into Dale. But I don't have that luxury right here. Okay, they're moving the Fellowship. I hit them twice, reveal them. So I definitely have been getting above average expectation on reveals. They take a random here, which surprises me a little bit. I mean, it is two damage, but they're only at two corruption. And there's, you know, if you get over uh, four or more corruption, Morgul Wound becomes less painful. So the odds of me having Morgul Wound are low, but I'm revealed. I have this muster. I don't know that I really want to use, um, like have a chance of getting rid of Strider and I want to use that muster to be able to hide because, you know, maybe if Shadow messes up, I'm going to get to play Fear Fire Foes as free people. But I think if you read the situation, Shadow is not going to mess up. Shadow is going to attack Dale on their second to last die, putting the North to war anyway, and so they can get the Witch King. Okay. Oh, Wow. Right. Wow. Okay. So that was a random draw and we got Strider. My past self typed wow <laughs> and I said wow. So my past self, my current self agree. Um, yeah. I mean, that's the risk. 
right? Like one one out of six, 16%. It's not huge, but it's not nothing either. And the more randoms you take now, the greater the chances of losing Strider later. Corruption is going up, but Shadow has already played Isildur's Bane, which is a scary tile if you're going high on Corruption. So I think I, think I probably would not have risked it on that draw probably all right so definitely bad luck for them and oh we're commenting because in last game uh they played lure of the ring and got strider one out of six and did three corruption to me uh i think this is obviously worse for them to lose strider permanently and now they can't even hide the fellowship it's going to slow them down okay so let's see I go ahead and attack Dale, right? Because I want to get the Witch King. I figured they didn't have two scouts. So I play my Great Host here because the value of killing that regular and leader is pretty high, I think, in terms of how susceptible Woodland Realm is and how many leftover units I'll have to possibly then go and kill Erebor and how efficiently I can take out Woodland Realm. So I play my Great Host. I was going to have to discard a card anyway, so I think that's a good use of it. And they get no hits against me. And now I take over Dale. I leave one regular in Old Forest Road so that if they do not promptly muster in Carrick, I can move in next round. I don't know really why that's going to matter that much. I guess, um, I, I mean, I'm sure they will muster. Like, what else are they going to do with that muster die? But I guess it does also sort of block their movement. It slows them down a little bit if they're trying to go for a military victory, if I get some crazy roll. I don't know. Does it really matter to leave that regular there? Okay. Or, honestly, why not move only one regular into Dale, or maybe two, and then leave a big army in Old Forest Road to be able to attack into Woodland Realm and also attack into Carrick? Yeah, I think that was a mistake. Better to move only a single regular or two regulars into Dale. I don't think this one northern regular is going to attack into Dale from Woodland Realm. And if they do, do I really care? Um, all right. So they muster in Carrick. I get the Witch King. He uh, Scourge gets Gandalf the White in Fangorn. Right. Because why bother putting Gandalf in Grey Havens anymore? They don't. They only have fear fire foes. Okay. I play. We come to kill. I upgrade one unit in Dale and one unit in Dimraldale. Ha! Dale and Dimraldale. <laughs> I didn't notice that before. That's fun. I notice. I upgrade my uh, orcs in Dale, Dimraldale. Um. Okay. So, I guess. I didn't have anything else useful to play. I could have played Candles of Corpses and then waited to see which um, army needed the help more. But I guess my thinking was I'm not going to worry as much about corruption damage for the Fellowship. And instead, I'm going to put military pressure on because the Fellowship is not going to be able to go that fast without Strider. Yeah. Would you have played Hill Trolls there? Would you have played Candles of Corpses? Would you have... I don't think I would draw a card into with a hand of four starting next round. But where would you put the orcs, the, the elites? Okay. I draw Little Asai, which is pretty useless, and Return of the King. Happy to see Swarm of Bats. That's always a useful combat card. They get Grimbjorn. Let's see what they're going to discard. I'm guessing Brave Stand? Yeah. So they get rid of House of Stewards, Brave Stand. Boromir is staying in the Fellowship. I allocate one eye, roll none this time. And they get three movement, pretty nice. But they are revealed. So they're probably only going to be able to move twice. They're only going to be able to move twice if they use a ring. I mean, if they don't use a ring. And I did not get a huge number of attacks. I only got three attacks. But it's, it's probably enough. And I do have Grand to you to turn one of these palantirs into an attack so that's decent um all right so they start by pass they start by hiding i put lorian i put lorian under siege better to put lorian under siege just in case they have power too great at least i get them under siege 
and then I muster the Southrons and Easterlings twice to get them to war, and now they continue to pass, which I think is right. Maybe I have Day Without Dawn to get rid of this, this Will of the West, but at, you know they would rather I reveal it if I if I have it. It's not going to be horrible for them if I get rid of it this round. Um, okay, and then I attack into Woodland Realm, and then they move the Fellowship. I miss them, which is certainly fair because I only had one die on a six. And then I play Grand. I'm guessing I play Swarm of Bats here just because... Okay, I cycle Words of Power. That's fine. That's fine. It's not. It's certainly not bad to get to cycle into more character cards now because if I get Cruel Weather, if I get um, the, the Black Captain Commands or Ringwraiths are Abroad or the Red Tiles or Nazgul Search or Nazgul Strike, there are a lot of useful character cards now that the Fellowship is revealed any of the tile drawing cards okay so i do get zero hits though on the first round uh they get one back next round am i going to play i redraw redrew worm tongue that doesn't help am i going to play any card i think i'm not going to play a card i'm just hoping to roll four four sixes in the next good number of dice they're thinking about playing a card they play shield wall just to increase the chances of that army surviving I get one hit only. They get three hits back. Very nice for them. And then this is round three. I I don't play any cards again. They play Sudden Strike. Okay, if you get one hit, it could matter. But they don't. I get no hits. All right. Wow. Pitiful job, Grand. That was, they had a very strong door. I couldn't get through it. Okay, uh, they do two hits back to me. And I, uh, wait. I see, they said, ah, they rolled one too many die dice. So they only actually did one hit to me, not two. Okay, and then I stopped. And Grand was not quite so good. All right, and... Then they move the Fellowship again, because that's good. And I miss them, which is fair. And I'm thinking what to do, because, yeah, I don't know. So I muster in South Rune, because I guess I'm just going to bring my bring my units together. I wonder... So I, I wonder what I'm doing with this Palantir. It's worth thinking ahead about that. Because if I am going to use it to draw a card probably better to draw it first especially if it's a strategy card maybe i'm just going to play candles of corpses here all right i what do they do they muster again in carrick okay i move my armies to east rune they play grimbjorn that is now a nice army in carrick and i yeah and I draw a card now. So that was that was poor ordering for me. I should have drawn that first so that if I wanted to play the muster die as the, to play the card I just drew with my muster die, I would have had that option. This way I end up discarding a card. Probably doesn't matter too much, but there was no reason not to order it differently. All right, so minor inaccuracy on my part. I could have gotten um, many kings and gotten units in North Rune and South Rune. I could have gotten Horde from the East. So, ha, Horde from, speaking of, Horde from the East. Okay, so I probably discard either Candles, Corpses, or Worm Tongue. I discard Worm Tongue. They got Dane, which is really nice, seeing this army come in. They must be happy about that. And I allocate an eye, roll one more, and they only get one movement. So, they are at two movement away from Mordor. So if they can move once with the Will of the West and then use a ring to move a second time, they're going to get into Mordor this time unless I cycle into Cruel Weather. Maybe, and I don't have anything right here that immediately is going to mess with them. So I think they're going to, I think free people should move right away. They do. And I miss them which is fair because I was only hitting on sixes. And then I take Iron Hills and form up in Woodland Realm. So I moved one regular 
into Woodland Realm. Was that worth it? I mean, they're literally showing two army dice movement. So, all right, let's see what happens. They pass here. That is a little surprising to me. I guess I guess the point is, yeah, I guess that's not surprising. Uh, the point is, if I had a card that could have messed with the Fellowship, I would have played it instead of moving my armies. So Sh Shad uh, Free People is properly reading the situation that I do not have anything right now to mess with the Fellowship, and therefore they can wait to give me the ring and see what what to do. So, all right, so I move my army to Dale. I move my army from Far Harad to Near Harad. Maybe someday I'll draw Corsairs, and that'll be great for me. Ah, and they say, I think when I lost Strider, I forgot that Isildur was already out. They're thinking back about <laughs> losing Strider. Yeah, that was sad for the Fellowship. Um, so, okay, yeah, and I, and I mentioned that. Okay, they. I am attacking Woodland Realm. Because why? I'm hoping that I can win this siege right now without having to spend this army movement to reinforce from Dale. And instead, I'm going to be able to use this army movement to pivot the Woodland Realm army to Dale and then go after Erebor. I think that's what I'm thinking. And I don't know that they have Dane, but... All right, so, oh, I'm playing a character card. Aha, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just cycling to to try and get to Cruel Weather or anything that's going to mess with the Fellowship a little bit, I guess, is my plan. Um, and maybe I'll get lucky and roll three sixes. So I, given that I was going to be cycling into character cards, I wonder... If it had been wiser for me to keep Worm Tongue instead of something like Threats and Promises, and that way I would have had an option. Candles of Corpses can inflict, you know, a decent amount of corruption. It's expected one and a half corruption before Gollum is guide. So if I'm trying to do some corruption, then okay, I am gonna forfeit only one. I well, maybe I'll forfeit two. Yeah, sure, forfeit two. I get one hit. They get one back, and I get to cycle my character card. Oh, I'm thinking about pressing. Okay, so I press because I got to cycle my character card. Still want to finish this stronghold. And I drew into Morgul Wound. Not that useful. I'm probably going to play either Desperate Battle or Deadly Strife. Which would you play? I mean, Pits of Mordor, there is some version of this turn where Shadow goes after more, I mean, free people go after Moria and Dol Golder with their army movement, and the North is at war. So I'm inclined probably to save Pits of Mordor and just play Horde from the East. It's probably overkill, but looking at the situation now, I'd probably go ahead and play it. It's also nice to save it for the battle in Erebor, but all right. I play Deadly Strife. Yeah. All right, so overkill on... Woodland Realm, and then they get two hits back at me. All right, they use a ring now because they know that I have cycled a character card in that combat. So now I could have something that messes with the Fellowship. So I think they're really playing this well. And I do get a hit. They are revealed. They go into Moranon, and it's a zero. Okay, so I'm just not inflicting that much corruption. Would you play Morgul Wound now? They are at three. I wonder if it was worth it, honestly, for them to just lose a random companion there. Like, I think you don't want to go up on corruption anymore and you want to just lose your companion so that you can get down to Gollum. Whoa, okay then. So Gollum is not going to save you from any reveals. Um. Yeah, all right. So corruption is getting a little high. All right, let's see what happens. So I think I play, yeah, I play Morgul Wound. I mean, five corruption is not is not nothing. Um, they play Elven Rope. I play On On They Went. And they muster Gondor towards war, which is great. So they're getting mustered before Corsairs come. And I pivot my armies, 
assuming, so I move from near Harad to West Harondor, figuring that I'm probably not going to get Corsairs, right? I have 18 cards in my strategy deck. Realistically, the odds of getting that in the next three cards, four cards, pretty low. I'm hoping, I mean, my, my plan, I, I don't think Shadow is in a great situation here. I have only three victory points. At some point, I can take out Lorien. Hopefully, they don't draw power too great or, you know, reinforcements, Celeborns in Lorien. And I can hopefully take out Erebor before they draw, before they get Danes. Obviously, they already have Dane, Dane Ironfoot's guard. But maybe I can still take it out. And hopefully, this army in Carrick isn't too bad. So I'm definitely nervous up here. If I, if I take out Erebor, that's five. If I take out Lorien, that's two more. That gives me seven. Where the heck do I get my last three victory points? I mean, I'm pretty far away. I, I think I'm going to end up pivoting to corruption, but I guess we'll see. So they muster a regular in Carrick and a regular in Rivendell. Did they not have a northern elite? So why didn't... What's going on? Why did they not just muster another elite in Carrick? I feel like that is... Oh, maybe they're thinking military? They're going to come in militarily? into Moria or Mount Gundabad. I think I would be inclined to still get another elite in Carrick if there's some crazy roll by Shadow that leaves these strongholds open, then I'll just march in and it won't really matter if I have two elites or two elites in a regular. But the more I stack this army in Carrick, the more it can really power up. And, and possibly take out Woodland Realm if this army in Dale moves to Erebor. So I probably would have put an elite in Carrick. Or if I bother to muster Gondor one towards war in advance of Corsairs, does this move to West Rondor really make you think they don't have Corsairs so it's not worth mustering Gondor towards war? Okay. I muster... <laughs> okay, so I didn't use the ring which is interesting. I could have used the ring to attack somewhere or do something, but I just mustered a regular in Moria and a regular in Dol Golder to defend against any sort of like insane roll next round that just loses me the game because they can march in. Because if I had spent this ring to turn the muster into an attack, then I wouldn't have had the ring and it makes me vulnerable. But I had Pits of Mordor. Well, it would have to have been a really insane roll of... No Palantirs, no Musters, and no Army Musters. And, like, no movement. Anyway, that was pr probably being overly safe, but... All right, moving on. So, I get Orcs Multiplying again and Breaking of the Fellowship. Could be useful. Uh, they obviously declare into Mordor. I'm allocating four eyes. Right. So... The hunt pool did get thinned out of the gray tiles, and okay, so I allocated five eyes, five eyes, uh-huh, no, maybe that's crazy, yeah, that's crazy, yeah, okay, I changed my mind, I allocate one eye, okay, so what am I thinking there? One option is, hope that um the fellowship moves and hits an eye if i allocate a bunch of eyes but the problem with that is they're revealed right now so they could just hide and then do something else with all of their actions and i'm only rolling four dice so they they can do stuff militarily if i only have very very few dice so I think, in and either way, I'm in a very dire situation. So I think what I'm hoping for is that they just don't roll a lot of movement. So I'm allocating as few eyes as possible. And then I'm just like, my, the lucky, you know, out that I'm playing for is Fellowship does not roll a lot of movement or they hit the red tile or they get revealed a bunch. I'm just going to hope for that. Not super likely, but possible. All right. So I allocate one eye and roll one. And then they get two movement. About expected, but they have to hide. So it's not, you know, great. So they hide now, and then I get the Mouth of Sauron. That makes sense. And then they 
pass. I attack into Erebor. They obviously play Dane, Ironfoot's guard. I'm not happy to see that. I say unfortunate. And then I'm thinking, and uh, they say, sure, looks dire for Shadow. Yeah, it does, because <laughs> they're like, how am I going to get enough military here to win this? Maybe I get really lucky on these combats. I move Nazgul around with a character die, giving up on Erebor. And just going after Lorien instead. They move the Fellowship. I'm not sure why I do that. Oh, I see. What? I'm going to try and go after Dol Amroth before they mess muster up too much? Or I'm going to be able to fork Dol Amroth and Minas Tirith? I don't, I don't know what's happening. Okay, they move. Sure. They get an eye. All right, so I'm, I, I'm at least happy they get revealed. That was close to 50%. No. That was not close to a percent chance. There were four out of 12 tiles, really five, including this red tile, five out of 12 tiles. All right. So a little worse than half that they would get a bad tile for them. Okay. So they definitely lose Legolas here and yeah, they're making a little bit slow progress, but okay. I play breaking into fellowship because look at all of these number tiles. I want to get them out of the pool. And if I get a three, that does four corruption damage. And a lot of threes are still in there. But I get an high. <laughs> All right. Well, if I had drawn a three, that would have been a very different, I think, very different corruption situation for uh, free people. But, yeah, I guess maybe it wasn't worth it. Uh, it, seemed, it seemed worth going for it. All right. So pulling an eye out, obviously not what I want to do. That, that is not good. I really have to hope that they just get low movement next round. All right, so I attack into Lorien. I'm just going to try and make military progress. I'm going to cycle my strategy cards because that's all I have to play. Devilry of Orthanc because I bothered to get this one regular in who marched from North Dunland. That's the benefit. And uh, okay, they beautifully played advantageous position against that. So really nice card play on their part. I get one, they get zero. I press because I'm just hoping to rush a little. I draw into Corsairs of Umbar. Okay, that is good for me. Um, strategy card. I guess I'm playing Desperate a Swarm of Bats maybe, followed by Onslaught to try and finish this combat. Swarm of Bats. I get three hits. They get... No, I get two hits. They get one back. I press, and now it's my onslaught. I onslaught and get no hits on my combat roll. They get one, and then I onslaught for four and manage to get two hits. So, yeah, you want to save onslaught for the last round of combat, whatever you think the last round is, so that you can most efficiently use your elites to press, press, press. And then when you're only down to regulars, you use up all your regulars to try and get those final hits. So that was an efficient combat i feel pleased with how i played that if they do not muster gondor right now i'm going to besiege dol amroth without any elites in it because i'm going to move this army back from west Torondor into umbar and then i'm going to use corsairs of umbar so let's see what they do they they use a ring they use a ring to hide the fellowship right so they want to try and finish next round Odds are, I would say, pretty low, but not that crazy if they start hidden. Because if they roll, say, three or four, uh, they're three or four character dice, they're, they're very unlikely. I mean, they're, they have some chances of not being revealed because there are just very few tiles that reveal them or stop them. Okay, so I think that makes sense. But now, I'm sorry to say, oh, right, I don't even need to use the ring. I just flip the Mouth of Sauron. I use that muster as a army movement. I, what the, okay. So I retreat to Dale out of Erebor because I'm worried that I'm going to lose these victory points. There's no point in trying to take Erebor, I guess is what I'm saying. And instead, I'm just going to defend Woodland Realm and Dale. That's my plan. And I took Iron Hills before. 
on my way to Erebor, which is generally a good idea if you're going to defeat Erebor. But now the dwarves are actually one away from war and they can muster dwarves to war the hard way and then attack out of Erebor and then start mustering in Erebor. And they have this giant army in Carrick, so it could be a mess up in the north. All right, so they move armies. They move to Osgiliath. That surprises me a little bit. I think you want to just keep a Minas Tirith defended because what happens if I eventually go and attack that? You're going to have to move backwards into it. All right, let's see. So I, what the? Okay, so I'm in no rush to take Dol Amroth and I don't want to put the... I don't want to put Gondor to war. Now, if Gondor musters to war, I'll play Corsairs of Umbar. And I guess this is threatening. I guess what's being threatened here is Asgiliath. If I move armies from Umbar into Dol Amroth, then they're threatening to send this army in Old Forest Road down to Dol Goldur. And this army in Asgiliath to West Herondor and either Farharad or Umbar. And if this army in North Downs goes up to Angmar, they have they have various threats. So I think what I'm saying is I want to muster this army up in Orthanc anyway, because to get my 10 victory points, I'm going to have to use this army in some way. And I'd rather see what my role is next round, as opposed to putting Gondor to war right now when I don't know exactly what I'm going to get or what they're going to get. And I, and I guess I'm just going after... Helm's Deep. That's my plan. They have Aomer. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna how I'm gonna get my last victory points. All right. I seem to be playing very defensive, not very defensively, but at least a little defensively against getting horrible rolls. But I wonder if I just go for it. Go for Corsairs. All right. So Balrog is not useful anymore because I've taken out Lorien. I'm hoping they just roll very few movement. That's my hope. I allocate one eye. Oh, they're drawing cards. Okay. I allocate one eye and roll two more, and they only get one movement, right? So this is absolutely what I had to be hoping for. I get some musters. These army movements are not that useful to them yet. So yeah, this is this is what this is what I had to play for. They move right away, which is certainly correct in case I have Day Without Dawn. And oh my gosh. All right. So that is absolutely the worst tile they could possibly draw. That was one out of 10 chance. Very low chances. Uh, if they had gotten an eye at that point, that also would have been bad. So because they would have been revealed, but at least they would have made progress. So, so now at this point, all right, so obviously they lose Boromir, they take one corruption. And now at this point, it is looking kind of unlikely that they that they'll even be able to destroy the ring next round. Because they not unlikely, but like close to 50-50 chance. Because if they move again this round with their ring, then and they don't get revealed, then they still have one, two, three moves next round, which means with without any rings left, they have to get three characters or palantirs which is or wills of the west which is you know they expect to get about two and a half if they have five dice so they might not roll that so i can think to myself i have two rounds still two more rounds to get 10 victory points that's possible i'm not going to get to 10 this round but i could do it next round so i think that's what i'm planning for all right so i just muster up or thank because that is the most viable place to attack they're passing to see where I attack. I muster up Orthanc even more. They go ahead and play Aomer. That's interesting. They play Aomer with an army movement die. I'm, I wonder if it's worth... Are they really worried about corruption? Maybe they're worried about corruption, but... I'm, I guess they're holding the Palantir to play Athalos or Axe and Bow, but... I mean, the hunt pool is very... I, I just don't think they're taking a lot of damage on the way. Uh, they could take, I mean, 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1. I mean, that's 10 damage, so... Uh, okay, so maybe they need it. I go ahead and play Corsairs now. I hope that they... And I leave one behind, so at least if they're going for a military attack, it's a little bit harder for them. 
they're thinking if they can go for some military attack. They attack from Old Forest Road into Woodland Realm now. That seems good. And then I obviously have to kick them out of that. I attack Woodland Realm. I don't play a card. They play Advantageous Position. Beautiful. I get no hits. They get one hit. I'm going to keep pressing. They retreat to Withered Heath. And, you know, they retreat to Old Forest Road. And I put... Okay, an elite and two regulars in, thinking that maybe that can hold Dale and Woodland Realm. They go ahead and move, and they get a three. That's fine. They they lose their, um, they lose Gimli or Gimli and Hobbit, and then I'm going to attack in Dol Amroth. So. Yeah, they did a really good job getting their armies into position when they could, but and, and certainly in Rohan, but they did not... And they drew Dane, which was a good reinforcement, but they did not have reinforcements for Dol Amroth. Had they, had they mustered, like a couple rounds ago, Gondor to war instead of moving armies around, when I had moved my army to West Rondor, they would have been able to at least get one elite in there. How much does that matter? Probably not that much. All right, so I'm attacking in Dol Amroth. I'm probably, I didn't play a card. Okay. I didn't play a card because I don't need to yet. I'm probably only going to play Desperate Battle if I play it at all. And I'm hoping that on 24 dice, I can roll three sixes because I have two presses and three leadership there. So I get one hit. They get one back. I don't get any hits. They get two to me. I press. I play a strategy card here because I want to finish them off. And I get the two hits that I need with Desperate Battle. All right, and they get one hit back to me. And now I've taken Dol Amroth. I mean, certainly if they had an elite in there, it would have taken me more turns to take it out. Okay, they retreat into Helm's Deep and they move armies into Pilar Gear to try and hold Pilar Gear. Nope, uh, they're thinking about how many to move in. They move in the amount that they decided initially. Okay, and now I attack into Fords of Eisen with my last die so that even if they have Ents, which they probably do at this point, but even if they have Ents, I don't lose the Saruman die until next round. And honestly, they probably are using their character dice to move and Wills of the West to move. So if they get a Palantir, though, they'll, they'll play at um, Athelos and Ents or Ents and Athelos. Or, ooh, they can do Ents followed by Gua here, which is the best, because then you remove the leadership of the goblin of the um, elites, and then you because Saruman's dead, and you also get to cancel out the Nazgul leadership, and then they end up fighting in Helm's Deep without any leadership at all. Ooh, that's yeah, great. Okay, so I attack into Fords, I get my one hit, but it doesn't matter because they have a full contingent in Helm's Deep. I get Rage of the Dunlundings, which is um you know, Relentless Assault is actually a very effective combat card when you have a surplus of units. And I do have 14 hit points against their seven. So it's it's pretty it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Um, they, I did draw Give It To Us, which could possibly help save the game if they get a bunch of movement. They get uh, I Will Go Alone and Scouts. I don't know how useful that is in this case. And I allocate one eye and roll one more. I did not get any character dice, so I'm going to have to spend a ring to reposition my Nazgul. I'm, oh, wow. And they got the movement they needed. So they did not get any Palantirs. So they are going to just move, move, move. They're not going to play Ents. They have to move, I think, right away. Yes, they move the Fellowship. There's a two. They take one Corruption to go to seven. So they have to move two more times. If I hit an eye, the Corruption could be an issue. So, yeah, so last round, did they not have a Palantir to play Athelos? They could have played Athelos last round instead of moving armies around. So is it possible to foresee this? I think that, yeah, this is possible. 
All right. So I definitely play the red tile because otherwise they can just move, move and have a pretty good chance of, of making it right. A three plus a two is five. That's still not enough to kill the fellowship because they could reveal on the last move. So I have to get an eye. That's my only way of stopping them. But now this red tile also stops them. So now I have three out of eight tiles that can put a lot of pressure on them. The eye alone, by the way, is not enough to kill them. It's an eye and followed by some higher corruption value. All right, so they move again and they get one. They reveal. Interesting. So that makes sense, I guess. They reveal because this allows them to hide and then move. Okay, very interesting scenario. So they do not have any rings. So if they're going to destroy the ring this round, they need to hide the fellowship and then move. And Every tile except for this red tile wins the game for them because the eyes only do four damage. But I have a ring and that ring can be used to turn a die into a eye. And that would mean there's five, one, two, three, four, five eyes in there, which means now these eyes become deadly. And I certainly like a three out of seven chance instead of a one out of seven chance of winning the game. Um, so what I need to do as shadow is I have to use a ring to, I have to use my ring to turn one of these into an eye and I have to threaten to get to 10 victory points this round. So at least they feel tempted to take the shot of moving the fellowship. So I besiege Helm's Deep and this is interesting because free people at this moment could play Ents plus Guahir to get Gandalf into Helm's Deep and then hope that Helm's Deep holds and acknowledge that they're not destroying the ring this round. We'll see what happens. I think they might... They, okay, so they hide the Fellowship. So now they are threatening... They're threatening to win one out of seven. So now is the moment that I have to that I have to spend my ring to make the eye. So I said, I feel like you have there is another way, but in case you don't, I will add this. So if they have there is another way, then they heal one before moving with Gollum. But, you know, I said that, but actually that's probably wrong because if they had there's another way, they probably would have used it earlier so that the uh, dice didn't go into the hunt pool. Um, all right. So I turn a muster into an eye and now at least the hunt pool is deadly for free people. And now, so now they know that I'm attacking in Helm's Deep. So is now not the moment to acknowledge, like if you're, hmm, yeah, right. So you could have with this with this character die, you could have played Ents followed by Guahir and get Gandalf into Helm's Deep. And then you have Daring Defiance that you can play, you have Mighty Attack that you can play, and there's no leadership here. There's no leadership in Helm's Deep. Whew. You're not destroying the ring this round, but I think you're holding militarily. Can, can this army with no leadership take out take out Helm's Deep with a Daring Defiance from Gandalf? Like whenever a shadow plays his strategy card, you play Daring Defiance. Gandalf isn't shining. Okay. Well, they're going to try and destroy the ring. It seems like they're going to wait and see how the military game goes, and then they're going to destroy the ring, or they're going to try and destroy the ring. So that's also reasonable. They were going to get to play the Ents as a 
combat card, <laughs> which is also good. So I attack in Homes Deep. I do not have the Witch King. So I'm only going to get to play We Come to Kill and Relentless Assault. That's it. And am I ever going to play Relentless Assault? I don't know. I have a bunch of it. I have. So I think I have two attacks to do this in. I attack once in Homes Deep, a second time in Homes Deep, then I go to Westham Net, then I go to Edoras. That's my plan. All right. So let's see what happens. Of course, I start with We Come to Kill. That is incredibly good. And and I will say, to give him, to, to be fair, I like I was playing to the outs that I had as Shadow, and I mustered up a bunch in Orthanc in advance because I thought this is the best chance I'm going to have to get more victory points. And I gave up on Erebor. So so I think that was, and I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold Dale. Probably. Who knows if this six-point army can hold against this seven-point army? It's going to be close. All right. So, uh, and if I had had any character dice, I could have rearranged Nazgul. All right. That's the way it goes. So I get one hit. They get three hits. I do We Come to Kill and get only one. And I'm guessing I stop here. Yeah, so I'm not going to press. And now I use the Mouth of Sauron. I'm attacking in Helm's Deep again. I have to take it out. Oh, no, I guess I have I have one extra die. So I get I get three attacks to take this out. Uh, no card. I get one hit. They get two hits. I'm wondering why I'm not playing Relentless Assault here. Do I really think I can get that many hits? You know, even one regular. All right. So they get two hits and I lose an Elite. And now I press. So I guess I'm thinking I have to try and take them out. And then this army in Dale might fall. I will retreat them to Woodland Realm. And then I'll have one extra die to be able to take out. Take out Dale again using the, these armies from Woodland Realm. I don't know. I guess I can also threaten, I can threaten Lamadon, from Lamadon to Pelargir and minus Morgul to West Herondor and then take out Pelargir in some way so that they can't defend both Ed, both Edoras and these other things. I'm not sure. All right. So I play Relentless Assault here. Interesting. Okay. So I, I saved it until I had fewer leadership so that my combat role is higher. Okay, maybe that's not crazy. I take two and I get four hits. And they get one hit back and I have five regulars. All right, so those five regulars are probably gonna be enough. They're thinking about passing. They're like, no, wait, no, maybe not. Okay, so they're gonna attack into Dale here. So they could have mustered in Edoras but that's not going to be enough to hold against this Helm's Deep army. So they have to attack into Dale. They attack into Dale. They get no hits. I get one hit back. They press. I stay. Because I'm still rolling five dice to their four. So I think it's worth it. They get one hit. I get one hit back. I'm still rolling five dice to their four. They, they get two hits now, and I get one hit back. And now they press, and I'm thinking I retreat. Yeah, so I retreat to Woodland Realm now. I move armies. Wow. So I moved an army to Withered Heath. I'm letting Erebor out of the siege. And this is just a minor optimization, because... They do not have they do not have any rings. So I can march from Helm's Deep to Edoras, and I can march this regular into Woodland Realm. And because the dwarves are not yet at war, they're just gonna sit in Erebor and watch this army in Dale try and survive. And therefore, free people is gonna have to try and take their chances at the ring victory four out of seven. So I was able to do enough military this round that threatened to get to 10. 
All right, so I move, they pass, they pass. And now I've taken I've taken Edoras. I have a eight point hit point army against Dale. Certainly they're gonna try and destroy the ring. And they draw an eye. Wow. Okay. So five corruption. They got to ten corruption. I mean they got to twelve corruption because I used my ring to put that. Uh, to turn a muster into an eye, and that gave me the best chances of uh, just winning the game. So that was a three out of seven for me in the end, a four out of seven for them. So, you know, obviously in their favor, but pretty close. And yeah, it's interesting to see how the corruption game can play out. I mean, it was also because they moved three times. They were really, they really had to rush at the end there. So the eyes, the eyes became valuable. Um, and remember, I did pull an eye with Breaking of the Fellowship out of Mordor. So their, the corruption could have been a lot worse. But they had Athalas, they had they had Axe and Bow, so they did have options last round. So, all right. That was a great game. Very interesting. These were two, these were two really good games. And obviously, I enjoyed getting to play them. Thank you for the game. Let's look at the statistics. So, okay, that's interesting. So I was minus seven on sixes. I did not. I did not quite realize that. I was pretty average on attacks, slightly under on attack dice, and I did have a little bit of a slow start with no Saruman turn one. So, yeah, interesting, interesting game. These these bonuses on fives probably helped some with relentless assault and. Deadly Strife and stuff like that. All right, turn eight, corruption win for Shadow. Thank you for watching. Have a good rest of the day.